Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 20th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Scottsdale, Arizona. On Friday, Rob published a nice script that helps you back up the configurations for your switches and routers. It does support quite a range of different manufacturers, and all you need to do is run the script and have a little configuration file that lists the IP addresses and the maker of the switch that you're trying to back up. Yes, there are other tools like this out there. The nice thing about this tool is that it's very simple. It's just a PowerShell script. So you don't need to install anything. You just run it on your Windows systems. For large enterprise network, you probably want to stick with your larger systems to back up router and switch configurations. And Google released a new zero-day vulnerability in Windows. This one is affecting EMF images. Now, EMF images are sort of a more modern version of the famous WMF format. If you remember, there was like this big vulnerability back in 2006, I think. And in this case, EMF does not allow remote code execution, but it may leak memory content. What's happening here is that an attacker can specify images with essentially bad size parameters for certain image areas, and then not provide enough data to actually fill in that area. So what the system will do, it will fill in a random memory content. Exploitability for this is, of course, a little bit tricky. So an attacker would first of all have to trick you into opening an EMF image. Now, that's probably the easy part because these images can be embedded in all kinds of other documents. It doesn't have to be just an EMF image by itself. Then secondly, of course, the attacker has to get a hold of the image that's being parsed in order to get a hold of the memory content. I can see this exploit being used as part of sort of a larger attack where the attacker has some kind of remote code execution vulnerability and then is trying to get a hold of random memory areas for approach escalation or maybe to bypass something like ASLR. So in other words, nothing super critical, nothing you have to worry about too much this week. Let's hope it will get patched with the March update. Now, Google did release these details, including a proof of concept image after the 90-day period expired that Google usually gives companies to fix vulnerabilities like this. Now, traffic ticket mail spam isn't anything super exciting or new. Probably you have seen a lot of that uh, where you're being threaded with some fine if you don't open a certain attachment. But uh, pretty much all of the spam like this that I've seen in the past was in English. Well, if you are living in Brazil, you're now being targeted by a Brazilian version of this particular trick. The email itself looks pretty convincing. They have some fussy images that look like they come from a traffic camera. Of course, you can't really see what car it is or a license plate, but even if you don't necessarily see your license plate, you may just want to open the attachment so you know how to complain about uh, this notice being sent to the wrong person. Another trick used in this campaign is that the attacker is storing the malware on Dropbox. Now, Dropbox is pretty good about removing some of these samples once someone complains about it. But of course, by using Dropbox, they evade a lot of the bad URL filters that people implement. And also, they use now HTTPS in order to download additional pieces of malware, which of course does render your network intrusion detection system somewhat blind to the download. An XML external entity exploits is something I have been looking at for quite a while. They do come up really often when you're looking at Java applications, particular mobile applications that are using XML to connect to web services. Now, Alexander Klink came up with an interesting trick that you can use to send email using external entities. The trick here really relies on using FTP. You can actually send FTP commands or requests using external entities. Now, in this case, the FTP request is sent to port 25. And if you have a loose configured mail server, it may actually ignore the additional headers like the user and password command, and then just parse the actual remainder of the command 
sends as an email. Now, most modern, reasonably well-configured mail servers will reject this, but it's always possible that you have an internal mail server that you only use to send email from the inside to outside recipients. That's a little bit more forgiving here, and uh, that, of course, could fall for this trick. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening, and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.